Well, thank you, Ray, for uh, that very generous introduction and for your leadership uh, in regard to the alumni uh, association here at the wonderful Binghamton uh, University and to President Stenger, uh, to my former uh, colleague in the New York State Assembly, Assemblywoman Donna Lopardo, to all of the uh, distinguished alumni who are here, the, the awardees, uh, family, uh, friends, and guests, good evening. It's an honor uh, and a privilege to be back on the Binghamton University campus. I think, I think this is my, my third time uh, back since graduating in 1992. It really uh, is wonderful as I approach the university and thought about the journey uh, that I've traveled to be able to come back and speak for just a few moments to some of the most important alumni of this great institution. Now, I've had occasion, I was in the state legislature for six years, and uh, now I'm down in Washington, D.C. in the House. I've had occasion as a, as a public servant to be the keynote speaker from time to time in a variety of different gatherings, but I got to tell you that I've never really been able to figure out whether it's more perilous to speak before dinner is served, <laughs> when folks are hungry, or after dinner is served, when folks are tired. But I do know uh, that I'd be, I'd be well served to follow what has often been referred to as the B rule of public speaking. The B rule of public speaking, be brief, be bright, and be gone. <laughs> and so let me just share a few reflections on my time at Binghamton and then some thoughts about where we are, I think, as an institution, as a country, as a government. I think there are really uh, three fond things that I take from my Binghamton University experience. The first thing that's significant is that I met my wife here. Now, if I didn't mention that at the top of the list, I'd be in trouble when I got back home. But we've been married for more than 15 years, and it's, it's wonderful that we were able to make the connection here uh, on the Binghamton University campus. The second thing I take away from my Binghamton experience is the fact, just like each and every one of you, we got a first-rate, elite college education at an affordable price. It was a public ivy then, and it's even more of a public ivy now. And wherever I went after Binghamton, I got a master's degree down at Georgetown University, and then went to NYU Law School, and then practiced law for a couple of years at Paul Weiss, and then at two Fortune 100 companies, and then in the state legislature, and now down in the Congress. Whatever institution I was at, no matter who was around me, I always felt like the education that I got at Binghamton put me in the same position, if not a better position, than anybody who was around me. And that was that's a wonderful thing to take with you throughout life. Now, as was mentioned by Ray, I'm the first, I gather, alumni elected to the House of Representatives. But we've had a long and distinguished uh, group of individuals who have served the public in a variety of different ways. I mentioned Assemblywoman Lepardo, who I served with in Albany. And it was Assemblyman Jeff Denowitz, who represents Riverdale in the Bronx. He's a Binghamton University graduate and Assemblywoman Michelle Titus, who I went to school with. At the same time, she serves in Albany, representing some neighborhoods in Queens. And of course, uh, John Liu is the New York City controller. He's a, he, he's a Binghamton graduate. And I mentioned John Liu because it was interesting. I had a conversation with him. I said, John, what did you major in when you were in school? He said, mathematical physics. I didn't know mathematical physics existed as a major <laughs> when I was here. I majored in 
political science, David Singrinelli knows that. And it was that political science major that really introduced me and encouraged me and inspired me as to the value of government and the vehicle of government as a means to help those in need. So I'm thankful for having that experience. And the last thing that I take away from a Binghamton perspective was that in my time here, it was really the first moment as a, as a young person that I was able to gain some confidence in my ability to provide leadership in some way, shape, or form. I thought about that. I was vice president of the National Panhellenic Council as a group of uh, fraternity and sorority organizations, and then I was president of the Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity uh, for two years, the Mu Kappa chapter, and had the opportunity to serve for one year as the political correspondent of the Black Student Union. It was actually an elected position. Uh, I was thinking about it, and I, I won after a very hard-fought three-way race. And so you might say I, I learned some campaign skills at the Binghamton uh, University campus as well, and certainly that was my, my first election. And so I look back on the Binghamton University experience in every way. Uh, it has touched my life. I thought that before I take my seat, I'll just reflect briefly on three quick thoughts as to who we are, what we are, and where we're going. As Binghamton University graduates and, and as a country, I think that we're a resilient people from a resilient country with a resilient democracy. Now all of us, with all the success in the room, I think you know that life is still filled with moments of adversity. You got ups and downs and highs and lows and peaks and valleys. Life filled with adversity. You know, one of the reasons why I think so many folks don't like to fly is because they recognize that at some point when they get on that plane, they're likely to encounter some turbulence. You know, up in the air, 40,000 feet high, plane starts rocking back and forth, no place to go. It's at that moment when everybody on the plane gets religion, Starts praying, Lord, just plant my feet on solid ground. What am I trying to say? Well, it's very difficult to get through life, to go from your point of departure to your point of destination without at some moment encountering turbulence. I ran twice and I lost twice for the New York State Assembly before I won my first race. And when I was knocked down on the ground after having lost that second race, I was able to draw strength from the fact that when I looked at others who had been incredibly successful in public service, but this is true in the field of any human endeavor, when I looked at others, it was clear that they had also confronted moments of adversity, moments that they had been knocked down on the ground. In fact, the last three presidents of the United States of America, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama, all lost their first congressional race. But they, they found something within them to pick themselves up off the ground to keep moving forward. They landed at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue as leaders of the free world. They recognized that there's a difference between a knockdown and a knockout. We're a resilient people. I also think that we're a resilient nation. If you look at our history and the history of any nation, there will be moments where 
will be caught off guard and surprised or ambushed by challenges that arise. You know, I recall that story of, of, of some young men who were gathered at the estate of one of the richest men in the world. And they were gathered at the estate, and they were at one side of the lake, and at the other side of the lake was the owner, and in the lake there were crocodiles, and there were alligators, and there was one small turtle. And the wealthy man called over to the other side and said, if any of you has the courage or finds the capacity to jump in that lake, rescue that turtle, and make it to the other side, I'll give you anything that you want in this world. About five minutes passed by and nobody responded and so the wealthy man turned around and began to walk away. And then all of a sudden he heard a splash. And so he turned back around and he saw one of the young men frantically trying to navigate his way through the lake. He somehow scooped up the turtle, made his way through the crocodiles and alligators, got to the other side of the lake, came out, dried himself off, handed over the turtle to the wealthy man who then paused and said, congratulations, that's, that's unbelievable. Now you can have anything that you want in this world. And the young man paused for a moment and said, I just want to know who pushed me in the lake. <laughs> See, there's, there, there's some moments where you'll confront unexpected adversity. And that's, that's true of the history of our country. And, and when you confront those unexpected moments of adversity, you've got to figure out whether we'll be able to sink or swim. Are we going to be able to rise to the occasion? But when you look at the United States of America, the answer to that question has consistently been clear. In 1814, the British burned down the White House. But America rose to the occasion. In December of 1941, the Japanese surprised us in Pearl Harbor, more than a thousand American sailors and airmen were killed, but America rose to the occasion. In 1962, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, the country confronted nuclear annihilation, but America rose to the occasion. And, and certainly here in New York State, in the aftermath of September 11th, when the terrorists struck, took down the Twin Towers and killed nearly 3,000 Americans, despite the uncertainty, we again rose to the occasion. We are a resilient country. And lastly, I think that we, we of course, are a resilient democracy. I've got the great honor and the privilege of representing the 8th Congressional District in Brooklyn. It's, it's a district that is largely anchored in central and downtown and southern Brooklyn with a few neighborhoods in Queens. It's one of the most diverse districts in the country. There are African Americans and Caribbean Americans and Latinos and South Asians and Eastern European Jewish immigrants. In fact, uh, there are more than two dozen languages spoken in the congressional district that I represent. Now, Donna, I've got I've to confess, I only speak two. <laughs> English and Brooklynese. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I actually represent more Russian-speaking Jewish immigrants than any other member of Congress in the country, and so I better start working on my Russian. But it's a district that's a microcosm of the gorgeous mosaic of New York City and New York State and of this country. And through it all, despite 
the great diversity of America and the immigrants that have come from all over the world, democracy has endured. A couple of months ago, I served as a, as a Black History Month speaker, and I was reflecting upon the fact that, that a little more than 150 years ago, African Americans were still enslaved. But in 1863, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. And then 100 years ago, the first minimum wage laws in America took effect. 50 years ago, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., with Christians and Jews and blacks and whites and Latinos led a multi-ethnic, multi-racial march on Washington. And then just a few months ago, Barack Obama sworn in for the second time as the 44th president of the United States of America, about 150 years from when descendants of Africa were still enslaved. And I was there at that inauguration, and I was, I was struck by the fact of the robustness of our democracy as illustrated by the reality that there was Barack Obama and behind him was on one side John Boehner and Paul Ryan and on the other side Jay-Z and Beyonce. <laughs> this is a robust democracy that has endured and it will continue to do so. We're a resilient democracy. And Binghamton University is, of course, an important part of the fabric of that democracy. And our short history, this wonderful institution has continued to educate at a first-rate level the sons and daughters of immigrants and working families and middle-class folks, preparing generation after generation after generation to access the American dream. And so I'm just fortunate that I had the opportunity to stop by here for four years and be part of that Binghamton University education. And now I've landed in the United States Congress, and I'm just committed to doing everything I can in my small way to make this country a better place for everyone. God bless Binghamton University, and God bless America.